Hi everyone. So finally, CBSC today conducted its class 12th biology examination and the cat is out of the bag. So the question paper is there in front of all of us. Let us quickly review it, have a quick snapshot and analysis of this question paper and guys and girls, the question paper as such was almost average. It was very similar and on the same lines as it was on the last year question paper. So if we have practiced the question papers of the past few years, it shouldn't be much tough for us. Fine, the overall weightage of the questions over here, approximately 70% of the paper was quite average. Only 16 to 17% of the questions were little tough compared to an average question that would have been asked and are approximately 13% questions were pretty easy. So almost a very average paper with all the very standard questions that are being asked, right? And let us discuss the set 1, for example, and let us start with section A. So coming down to section A, which consists of very short answer questions, each carrying one marks, and it has only five questions. So let us see the first question. The first question simply asks about why MTP has been much prohibited in India? So we have to give the reason for it. And the reason is to prevent female feticide. Fine. Similarly, let us take up another question. So that states, state the fate of a pair of autosomes during gamete formation. And we know if we have a pair of homologous chromosomes, they are going to separate out during gamete formation. Because gamete formation generally occurs through the process of meiosis. So over here, the auto, the pair of autosomes will separate out from each other and each will move to a separate gamete. So a very simple question with a very standard reply. Fine, so nothing much tough over there. And another question of section A, what is biopiracy? A very easy one. I need not discuss the answer. Let's move on to section B. And section B again, we know, consists of five questions, each carrying two marks. Fine. And let us just take up one of the questions from section B. So one of the questions from section B is, describe the structure of a nucleosome. So I don't think that is at all tough. So this is a question where you can slightly draw a diagram and write one in two lines about what is nucleosome and get done with it. Fine. Let us see another question of section B and that says, so plenty of algal bloom is observed in a pond in your locality. What can be the reason for this algal bloom and how we can prevent it? So we all have learned about eutrophication of water bodies. So the same thing has been asked over here. So that is it. Just explain it a bit in detail. Remember, it's a two mark question having <coughs> not much weightage. So we need to restrict our words. Fine. Let's move down to section C. Section C consists of 12 questions. So from question number 11 to question number 22. And each question over here is going to carry the weightage of, a prox of, weightage of 3 marks. So we need to be very uh, precise in our wordings and the answer is going to be slightly linear, right? We know this very well. So only question which I found over here is directly asking us to draw a diagram is question number 12 of set A or set 1. Draw a label diagrammatic sectional view of a human seminiferous tubule. So it is asking us to go within the human reproductive system and draw the structure of a seminiferous tubule along with the Sertoli cells and showing how spermatogenesis is occurring over there. Fine, you can show two or three seminiferous tubules with the lytic cells in between. So that should do the job. So you need to draw a nice and neat diagram over there. So Again, let me take up another question which says, during a medical investigation, an infant was found to possess an extra chromosome 21. So, very standard question, trisomy of chromosome number 21 has been asked over here. So, we can tell what it is, what are the effects of it, right? So, nothing great as such. Then, another question says, a number of passengers were severely burned beyond recognition during a train accident and what can be the modern technique of biology which we can use to identify the victims. So the answer is going to be our DNA fingerprinting, right? We all know this. So these are all very standard and simple questions, nothing great about it. 
so let us move on and let us discuss few more questions of our section c i will pick up another question which says explain what is restrictive endonuclease what is gel electrophoresis fine and selectable markers in pbr 322 so very standard questions if you have studied your biotechnology chapter or uh, the techniques over there so nothing great over there and another question says why do lepidopterans die when they feed on bt cotton plant so remember bt cotton plant is a transgenic plant so we have to explain that bt cotton plant is producing a toxic protein which is secreted by the bacteria bacillus thuringiensis fine and this protein is toxic to most of the insects so as soon as the insects are ingesting this protein their mid guts are getting a wound right and as a result they will die of internal bleeding so that can be the answer to this that is the answer to this question a very simple one again okay so now it's time to move on to the next section that is section d which always consists of one value based question fine so this question is going to be for four marks and it's a value based question let us see what the question is in set 1 and the question says how would you justify your arguments that uh, promote burying and discourage burning of waste right with the help of a flow chart one for each practice depict the chain of events that would follow fine so that is the question and we need to give the reply in four marks so basically you are going to tell us that burning is going to create pollution and it's not useful whereas burning it will turn it into manure fine a very standard reply so nothing great over there and let me move down to the most important section section e which is of 15 marks having three long answer questions right and each question is having a weightage of 5 marks so let us discuss the questions over here they are pretty interesting all the pretty standard nothing uh, out of the way so we have a guava fruit which has got 200 viable seeds so the first question is what are viable seeds then write the total number of pollen grains and gametes which are required for producing 200 viable guava seeds so these are the two parts of the question remember most of your five marks questions are divided into two to three parts fine so that should make the thing simpler for us as usual so let us see the sixth part c of this question which says prepare a flow chart to depict the post pollination events leading to viable seed production in a flowering plant so after pollination what happens the pollen grain germinates on the stigma right and the pollen tube simply descends down all the way to the ovary enters the ovule carrying your generative cells and then one of the generative cell is going to fuse with the female egg and the other generative cell is going to fuse with the two nuclei of the central cell of the female gametophyte so we need to describe the whole process a little bit in detail with the help of a flow chart fine so that's the section c a very typical and a standard question which is generally asked and let us look on to another question of section e and this question simply says so how do the observation made during moth collection in pre and post industrialized era in england support evolution by natural selection so the question is on industrial melanism so all we need to tell over here is during pre industrialization era there was no suit and the light color moths will were favored and during industrialization era there was a lot of suit everywhere and dark color moths were difficult to be picked up by their predators as such light color moths population went down so that is a typical example of natural selection then explain the phenomena that is well represented by darwin's fringes other than natural selection we know darwin's fringes not only is a classic example of natural selection but also of adaptive radiance right so we need to explain how it's an example of adaptive radiance so remember most of the questions in section e have a choice so this is one of the choices the second choice 
that we could have attempted is state and explain the law of independent assortment in a typical Mendelian dihybrid cross. A very easy question if you have just remembered the basic of your genetics. Fine. So, that is all about the glimpse of your this year question paper. It was pretty lengthy as usual biology papers are lengthy. We need to write a lot. So, let us not worry about that and I guess all of you will get a wonderful result. All the best to you for your results. Thank you.